Another question we get is uh, the, to define what a draw cycle is, like the, the components of the bow or what you're going through as you feel it. If you've ever drawn a compound bow, when you first draw the string, you can feel that it's, it's pretty taunt. And as you grow, the, the weight increases, increases, increases till you get to peak weight, which is about halfway through the draw. That'll be, let's just say this is a 70 pound bow, you reach to 70 pound. And if this bow has 75% let off, meaning when you reach the valley, so it goes up 70 pounds and then it drops off. If you've drawn a compound bow, you know how it's easy to hold when it's at full draw. Well, with the, um, the way that is, is when it's at its weakest point or the lowest poundage, that's the valley. Well, in modern bows, uh, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was no really wall. It was just you, you shot in the valley of the bow. It was just kind of spongy, low poundage, so it dropped from uh, 70 pounds down to about 25. Well, now we've put in a hard wall so that we can determine your draw length. The wall is there so that you have something to pull against uh, when it's a uh, uh, a, a back tension shot is is the way you want to desire to shoot the bow. So as you pull, it's 70, 70, 70, 70, and then it drops off into, you know, I'm holding less than 20 pounds. But with modern bows, like I was saying earlier, it's got a wall that you pull against so that you have a place to hang your hat, so to speak. So when you're anchored in, you're at your true desired draw length, and then you can pull into that wall slightly so that you're pushing and pulling using your back muscles so that when the shot goes off, you're not changing the draw length, but the, the shot executes this way rather than collapsing. Okay. I'm not much of an artist, but I'm gonna to try to illustrate this. This is a redneck illustration. So, this is draw length, and this is draw weight. So we're gonna say that 70 pounds is here, and we'll say 30 inch draw, just to round it off. So as you draw the bow, Halfway through the draw cycle, it goes up to 70 pounds. You reach peak weight, and then you come back down. And then this is the bottom of the valley, right here. So at about 29 inches is where we reach the valley. This is the valley right here. And then, naturally, if that's 70, this is going to be approximately 20 pounds. I'm just giving you a ballpark number. That's, say, around 75% let off. This is the valley, and then the hard wall is right here at 30 inches of draw. This is where we put our draw stop. That's the wall and draw stop. So that if your draw length is 30 inches, you go up to 70 pounds, drop off into the valley where you're holding something comfortable, you pull into the wall, and here's your draw stop so that you can't pull any farther into that draw stop. This is to make sure that your draw length is customized to you. You can draw exactly the same every time and then you can execute good back tension against that wall so that you're machine-like shooting exactly the same every time. All right, I'm going to describe it, the draw cycle, as I draw it. So it's in a relaxed state right now, but yet the string is taunt. So when we put a little pressure on it, it's climbing to peak weight, halfway where it's 70 pounds. And then you hit the valley, you drop off in the valley, right here. So now you can see I'm relaxed and I'm holding 75% less than 70 pounds. But as I hit the, fir the firm wall, the poundage may go up just slightly, but it, it, it ensures that I have an infinitive or a definitive uh, draw length. So it, it's where my draw length ends so that I can maintain the exact draw length so that I can get a good shot. It's a place to hang my hat against the wall so that when I, I shoot, I can pull into it with my back tension and execute a good shot.